I want to yell. It's February 1st. I can't believe it. But I love listening. That song is coming from a tiny bird, which is the wrens that nest on the pepper tree. He's probably getting ready to let everybody know this is his place. I can't believe February 1st is already here. We're going to do a garden tour to let you know the hummingbirds are already building nests all over. This morning I watched a hummingbird pick all this beautiful spider web and take it to our nest. Absolutely gorgeous. But let's do the garden tour because that's what we're here to do. I want to say that in these totes here on the wall, this is the driveway, that I've picked all the vegetables for the rest of, you know, for the end of the season, I should say. We're going to go into spring. But here's the thing, I still have a squash there. This is still growing squash here. Look at all the zucchini. I've got new zucchini growing. Got some of them in the back, don't look so good. I should pull those off and compost those. I haven't done anything. This is all old, old plants. I mean, let me show you really quick on the table here. This is some more that I just recently picked. It was just laying out here. Pretty bad shape, but you know what? still edible. These are just things I never planted last year. I had this table set up to plant things, you know, seedlings and get ready. But the eggplant starting to take off. Pick the last of the cucumber. These buckets, um, we're going to get into buckets this year. The lettuce has been phenomenal. You would say, well, there's not that much lettuce there. You know what? You're right. Why is it so short? Because I'm picking this daily. I've been coming out and picking the biggest leaves. So it just keeps on going. And I've been getting so much lettuce, I can't, we're eating more salad now than we have in the longest time. We'll get in the buckets, why they're set up differently, and what is the difference as far as growing. Look at the Malabar spinach. It is collapsing. We'll have more in the spring. All the berries will fall and they'll start growing on their own. I won't have to plant it anymore. Look at the chilies growing. We've been picking those chilies. It's unbelievable, those peppers. This tomato plant is amazing. I'll show you the other one. My daughter sent me these Goliath tomato plants last year. Sent me, you know, she had Gary pick them up. She gave me three and I didn't really get anything out of them. That one I really haven't done anything with. Let's keep walking. Yes, those are black beauty or purple beauty peppers and tomatoes, another pepper basically coming from the bottom. See how it's getting new growth? We're getting ready for spring. I'm gonna have to trim that all back. I've got lettuce growing in here. I spot lettuce anywhere I can. Look at this. So if you've got totes or a place in the ground that you can spot lettuce and you grow it like in a blanket, like in a rug, I grow my, uh, my lettuce that way and then I move it. I've got a video. I'll put the link underneath on how I do it. This is garlic. We're getting to the tomato. I haven't forgotten. Look at garlic and see how I spotted some lettuce in between. There's lettuce there. There's a lettuce there. there. So this way, as the garlic's growing, my lettuce is going to grow and I'll have lettuce. If it looks like it's bothering the garlic, I'll cut it out. This, nothing. These are just Brad's Atomic Tomatoes. That's a purebred tomato plant, not a hybrid. But I'm going to say my hybrids look just like them. But here it is. Look at this. There's, what, a half a dozen tomatoes on there, if not more. I've been picking tomatoes on here constantly. We had two last night. We had a couple the other night. Can you believe this tomato plant? Let me step back so you can see it. Didn't grow really much for me last year at all. So I was getting ready to think about cutting it out, planting something else there, and it just took off. So I put tool around it because something had gotten in there, some sort of rodent probably, and ate one of my tomatoes. But ever since I put four steaks there, tomato steaks, and wrapped it in tool, just simply zip tied the tool on, I have not had them bother them at all. Aren't they beautiful? Look, there's more back there. Here, they don't bother at all. They don't like the tool, so they won't go up it. It works fantastic. Let's keep walking because really nothing new. See, those were hybrids, so I thought it was just planted. You know, they reseeded themselves. I moved around a lot of these tomato plants, and they taste and look just as good as their brads. So I guess you can just collect them, plant them, and they'll keep on growing. Like I said, in here, this is how I grow lettuce, see? Just like this, and then I move them. It's better to move them a little smaller than this. This is just a weed. Really don't want weeds. Got to get some of the weeds there. This is garlic chives, but I've got some grass coming up back there. But this is how I grow them. Am I in here? And at a certain stage, which is a little bit too big here, but they'll still move. 
these are movable. Kind of like you move baby onions and real onions. You want to move them before they get big and put them where you want. Well, you can do that with lettuce. Like I said, check out the video I did. It's fantastic. I don't even have to think about where am I going to plant my lettuce? Where am I going to put the seeds? How am I going to? No, I just let them grow. Just take from the seed head, sprinkle it in a tote, let them just grow like a field and move them where I want. We have tomatoes everywhere. I still have a few carrots left, as you could see that I really need to pick and get out. My eggplant's making a comeback. Oh no, I just got hit by a drop of rain. And then I've got basil in here. I've got my sage, it looks really sad because we've been cold, and my only thyme plant. But I got seed and I'm gonna grow thyme. I have bought those, so maybe if I grow it myself it will be better. This tote probably will clear that out. All my turmeric died back. This is the turmeric, I had some turmeric that didn't look good. You know, the tuber looked dried out and I thought, well, it's not gonna be any good. I shoved it down there and lo and behold, I've been picking turmeric out of there, digging it out and using it. Unbelievable, Gary loves eating it. He says it tastes like a carrot to him. But it's been really great. And that was one I thought wasn't gonna make it because I have a different place that I actually grow my turmeric and ginger. But that's a Swiss chard in there and we'll get to that and clear it out. I've got some, of course, walking onions back there. But look at this. I've got three totes set up on these chairs, and we'll get into that as spring comes too. And this has been phenomenal. I catch the water in only one tote, so I can rewater the water back, because it's got everything from my garden in those totes. I know exactly what's in there. And I'm planted, let's see, I planted some potatoes, the potatoes that I harvested last year. I did a video on it, they were real tiny. I put them all back. I put them in that tote and that tote. The middle tote has got the onions. It's a white onion. They all threw seeds like they were supposed to, the ones I left. But one, one of the onions actually threw baby onions on the top. So I kept all those and I've got it marked in there. And we'll see what happens. So these are real onions. They're not walking onions, but I want to see if some of them go to seed, if they are going to actually grow onions or what. And then what else is growing in here is each one's got, see, isn't that cool? Cabbage. I planted some cabbage. I don't do well with cabbage only because, as you can see, the insects get to them. And I was getting really close to covering this with tulle, like I usually do. And when I came out here to cover it, there was a little wren inside there eating all the insects. He can't get them all. He's really little, it's probably his territory. And I thought if I cover it, this is his big source for food. So I left it. I figured, you know what, if it makes it, it makes it. I'm making coleslaw now at a tree collard and I actually like it better. We'll see what happens, but I just didn't have the heart to cover it with tool. The best thing to do, since you don't need to have anything, you know, pollinated by bees, if you're growing cabbage, and you have a aphids problem, then what you can do is cover it with tool. And it really gets rid of your problems and you'll have everything nice and clean. But he's been working all these totes and he comes down and hops in and out of the totes and he goes in there and he'll spend like 15 minutes in there. So I decided to just leave it. It's not that important. Whatever I get out of there, the cabbage I get out of there. The main thing is I'll get potatoes because I got potatoes in there and potatoes in there. That was the main thing. And then of course the onions. Okay, well, and you know, about the buckets. I am so excited with my buckets. I think I did overdo it. I will admit it, I overdid it. But you know, that's okay because I am planting up stuff in buckets. And not only that, I can plant up a bucket and send some to my friend, send some to my daughter. She's getting a bucket of garlic with lettuce spotted in it. So buckets have been fantastic, but this is gonna be something we're gonna talk about a lot this year because, well, not just because of my excitement, I, it will work for anybody, and it is raining. It will work for somebody that's growing in the ground. It will work for somebody that's container gardening, and it looks so cool. So let's go to the front yard. We'll get back to the buckets and do that separately, but I just wanted to show you, yes, the buckets are here, but they're starting to go down because I am planting in buckets now. Let's walk over to the front yard, which is right here. Look at that. The front yard is changing. Isn't that exciting? I'm so excited. I can't wait to get out here. I want to get all this planted up. This is going to be different. To, I don't know. 
I, I was going to tell you it's going to be different types of kale and different types of collard. I've got my purple tree collard, but we really worked on this. Gary made this, and he promises me that he's working on the video and putting it together. But he's got so many other projects and things he's doing. He said he hasn't had time yet, but he will. This is a puzzle. This entire thing can be moved. If I wanted it in a different part of the yard, every piece comes a, to get, uh, apart and every piece goes together exactly as is. It's a puzzle. That's the only way I can put it. It's not a Lego because Legos, you can build it any way you want. It's literally a puzzle and it's absolutely gorgeous. Let's look in here. Look at this. Isn't that something? He'll show you exactly how he made it. I didn't watch him make it, but I knew he was working. So I haven't put holes in these yet. So I'm going to have to start getting holes in here. Somebody borrowed a tote, probably Gary, to... Oh, I think I know what he did. He borrowed... Yes, yeah, see what he did? He pulled out all the geraniums. He's been cleaning up around the house over there. And he put it in here because I'm planting a lot of these. And whatever I don't plant, well, I guess I'll compost it. But I am planting a lot of geraniums that kind of got taken over they were taking over a side the side of the house over there and we figured he figured he better get them cleared out but anyways i want to get the tote set up probably we'll put the hole not on the bottom i can't put anything here in the front yard anymore on the bottom because of these trees look at this where do you think they're getting their water from and not a lot of people have giant pine trees in their yard like I've got three massive pine trees and even a pepper tree over here not counting the palm tree but yes they do go in here and if the holes are on the bottom of the totes they absolutely will send their roots up through the bottom they will block the holes they'll go and they'll find all the holes put their roots inside the tote and then they'll block the holes and then what happens at that point is it stops draining I don't notice it and that's when you lose your plants remember no matter how you're growing in a bucket totes whatever containers food containers you still have to have drainage so the holes will be on the side now if I have to hmm, if I made any holes on the bottom of these I'll have to make side holes for sure to make sure it drains but the problem is they really they can cover the roots all inside of one of these containers and then they can just suck up all the water so we'll see just keep an eye on it, you know, as time goes on. And then, of course, growing in containers. I don't have any gopher problems. So we have gophers. Now, this is blacktop, so I don't get gophers here. But even with the blacktop, any place the blacktop is covered, the tree, as long as it can keep its roots covered and it doesn't air prune, it will go right under the wood chips he laid here. And it doesn't matter that there's blacktop. They will go through the blacktop and travel. If we raked it away and it dried up, then I wouldn't have the problem. But, you know, we have wood chips here. So that's it. So here's my purple tree collar. We moved it here. It's been doing fantastic. I'm thinking of moving the blueberries. Going to get that moved someplace else. Now, like I said, I haven't done anything. There's red vein sorrow and celery and there's a cutting of a tree collar and more celery. I think there's a couple beets left in here avocado trees everywhere. I actually watched the ravens the other day come and drop avocado pits in the totes. I don't know if they do it on purpose, but they'll come here and they'll sit right up here and then bam, it falls and it's in my tote. And then I don't know it's there. And there I've got avocado trees growing because of the ravens. So that's what's going on here. And then here I'm going to change all this up to see the blueberries. I was going to move them and I don't know if I can move them because these three plants that are quite happy, they may be getting, well, I've done a couple different things in here. They may be getting more sun than those three over there. So I'm not sure why these are doing really, really well. I will say I've taken green pine needles so if let's say I find a piece that blew off I put it in a bucket and I soak the green pine needles and then I water the plant and I was doing this one really good and that might have caused this to just take off and start growing because it's perfect for it it likes acidic soil and the thing is if you use brown pine needles the acidicness is gone already as soon as the pine needles dry out you're not going to get the benefit. But green, well, I guess it works because it worked for that. Let's see what else is going on. So we're not doing that. Oh, more things here because Gary, we'll see. We'll walk over there. He's building a new retaining wall. So he just kind of piled everything here. So that's what's going on in the front yard. And then I've got, oh, look at all the broccoli. 
and then I've got the succulents that was here when we got the house so I didn't put in there they were there I left them but I have a tote in the center and that's actually where I had the blueberries I had the blueberries there these three but what happened was something started chewing them up could have been I've seen ground squirrels who knows what so I moved them up there and well they're happy there but I still want to change them around so we'll see what happens so I have not done anything new other than starting to get it set up because I want to be able to take that hose over there just come in the center and just water and I'm done just like my chair garden I have a five minute job and I am done not even five minutes it takes me less than that to water and with totes I don't have to water that often anyways unless it's really hot and it's summertime these are cuttings purple sprouting broccoli look at that stuck some sticks in here look how tall they're getting I think I'm going to move those I think I have an idea where, where I'm going to move it see he took out all the geraniums that one was in a pot but it kind of took off into the ground I guess the pot got buried and broke which is fine and then we'll fix this up and that's about it I don't need a ton of stuff in the front you want to be able to walk and then the bricks well they're doing okay the onions are quite small but they're still doing good the walking onions but look at that the tool that I put up last year going strong and it's gonna stay there hopefully it'll stay for a couple years this is where he's building a new retaining wall because the other one was falling down so that's why everything got moved say and I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do I might do more ginger and turmeric in the front yard being that it does have a lot of shade so I'm not sure like I said as time goes on you'll see what I'm gonna do because I'm not sure either and look at my beautiful ginger and turmeric table no it's not beautiful but you know what it is beautiful why because it's loaded with ginger and turmeric unbelievable I wish I could show you but I haven't even dug it up yet look at this look at all this is ginger this is all ginger I've got to get all this dug up I haven't done it yet and then I've got to separate them I've got to separate some I've got to freeze some use some fresh I have picked fresh to make cookies so I've got all this and it's very easy once I dig it up what's what this is the black one this one I've got labeled see a piece of black tape on a fork if I would have had an ice cream stick, you, you, don't know what you know what happens with ice cream sticks. They disappear. It's like the wood chips. It disappears back into the ground. So I just took some plastic tape, stuck it on top, and put with a Sharpie black turmeric, and it lasted all year. So I know this is black turmeric. Got to get this out because this started with that little piece, and then last year I had a whole bunch, and now I know that's going to make maybe three containers. We'll eat some of it haven't really eaten it yet but we'll eat some of it looks blue bluish purple when you cut it and then the rest is all you know this is turmeric see it's got a bigger leaf you know the rest we'll take out and then I'll figure out what I'm gonna do haven't done this yet but I'm getting close very very close and then there's my stevia see that's my original stevia the tag is still there this is years old now what's gonna happen is this stevia has died back it will come back from the roots so this is stevia and then this is stevia see the stevia here if you follow it down that's stevia there's a little bit actually starting to grow see it comes back there it is that's perfect for you to see look at that it's already it thinks it's spring it's february 1st it but see that's all the new stevia that one's coming back it doesn't look like this one is yet maybe that one's got a little more water who knows maybe it's a little warmer but that one's coming back and I think there is more stevia yep more stevia in this one what happened was let me back up over here so I can explain to you I bought this I don't remember it's either Home, Home Depot or Lowell's and see it says you can make tea out of it and the tag is pretty much gone cool that I still have it well I separated some of it it was it was packed with a whole bunch of little plants I tasted it it was very sweet so I figured well that's a good you know group of plants to get and then I separated them into different pots but I left some in the original pot just kind of took a a knife and cut out some and, and moved it so the ones I separated grew and then of course that one I just left in the pot and set it there and it grew so I ended up with all that stevia so I've only bought stevia once and every year it comes back and I separated more and I've got it growing on my deck my deck I have it layered 
And because it's layered and next to where the plant is growing, there's another pot inside. It's hugging the pot and it never died back. Like this one died back. You can see how much it died back. The one on the deck never died back. Now this is seed and I have not collected the seed, but this is stevia seed. And if I wanted to, I shouldn't. If I wanted to, I could probably collect it and grow it, but I just let it come back on its own. I don't know how well it would grow. I haven't tried it. I just let it come back and there has been places it's popped up probably from the seed, but look at that. Remember how beautiful it looked? Oh, and I have a little bit here. See how, isn't this interesting that this one that's up against the bricks, some of them stayed alive. This one just died back. And this one is still alive. I put some tool here because something was climbing in there. And the tool stops them. They don't like the tool. So you can just bunch it up and put it on the bottom of your plants. So I'm going to clear all this out. I have a different idea what I want to do with this rail. And I'll probably set up totes with it. And I'm going to figure out another place to grow the turmeric and the ginger because it really likes it here. It likes morning sun probably because the heat of the summer and the heat of the fall, it really likes morning sun and then shade in the late afternoon. So I have to think about that. I might be able to use something in the front yard, set something up there. Okay, let's go into the main garden and see what's going on. We're now in my main garden. Here, I've been using this. This is that container, this long big thing that Gary picked up out of the trash. I've been dumping all my kitchen scraps and and cut leaves and stuff anything that scraps of course I don't throw anything away that was once a plant once alive so everything gets thrown in there because I'm not planting in there yet and I don't want to throw it away I don't want to throw that away because leaves kitchen scraps even bits and pieces of shredded paper all that goes back and makes soil for me so if I don't have a container I'm setting up you know a plastic container tote bucket whatever then I throw it in here as you can see, there's eggs and different things in there. And a lot of stuff is filling with water. So I'm going to have to go through and just tip it out as well as figure out, you know, where I want to put it soon. Because I don't want to create mosquitoes, even though I haven't seen a lot of mosquitoes in the cold weather. All right. I've got broccoli down there, different, uh, some sort of broccoli. I think it's broccolini. Another one there, tree colored. As you can see, I haven't done anything in here. Well, I have. And we'll get into that in a minute. Oh my goodness, that place is covered in birds. As soon as I w start walking through, they're all going to take off. But it is just covered in birds. There's been all kinds of birds. And you know what? The house finches, the ones with the red, they're so flashy right now. The red is so bright because they're getting ready to go into breeding season. And of course, the females are going to pick out the most handsome males. Well, at least that's what the birds hope. So they are just beautiful. They eat really good food and it brings out their color. But let's get back to the garden. So here I have basically cleared out the dead dinosaur kale that would have been, what, six years old now. I left a little bit. Not sure if I'm going to leave it all, what I'm going to set up here yet. So I just left the trunk. It's gone. It's, it's not alive anymore. But, you know, it's a nice perch for birds to sit on. And maybe I'll put a water feature here. I have this water feature that runs when it's sunny. It's a cloudy day today. Like I said, off and on it starts to rain. So when I get in here, in here and I really start to go to town here, then I'll decide what I'm going to do. As far as this dinosaur kale, these are cuttings off my main plant. They are doing fabulous. They are just gorgeous. So sweet to eat. Tastes fantastic. And I've been putting that in my coleslaw and also in my salads and stir fries and soups and everything. This has just been wonderful. As you can see, the lemon verbena has all died back. The dragon fruit, Gary twisted it more along the fence. See, it's taking off. Not the fruit itself, but the plant. It's getting bigger and bigger. I have to be careful because it comes through and I'll reach for something and sometimes I'm not wearing gloves and they have little, you know, thorns and they'll get you. So, I haven't done anything. Here, what I'm doing is I'm starting to plant up some of the geraniums that Gary took out from the front yard. I want to get a lot of cuttings going. And then as you can see, nothing here. But here is my mushroom plant some of you have asked about. It hasn't completely died back. The one in the back has turned yellow. This one still has a lot of green. This is really good. What you eat from here is that leaf. Mm. And really, you chew it up. It's great for salads. You can stir fry and do different things with it too, soups. It tastes like you're eating a piece of mushroom. That's why it's called mushroom plant. You know, normally it does die way back, 
in the winter and this time it hasn't so I'm not sure what's going to be but I do see down on the bottom a lot of new growth coming through. I want to get a lot more cuttings on this. I have successfully grown three cuttings off of this now just by taking a, a piece off like that and sticking it out my kitchen window with my lettuce and it rooted. So I've got three more plants. Gary doesn't have any in his garden so maybe I'll get one in his garden. And then like I said these are old totes. These totes now are good They've got to be a good six years old, and there's not a split on them. Look at that. Isn't that something? Keep your totes full of soil. Water them if you're in an area where you need to water them, even in the winter when you're not growing in them, and it will keep the plastic flexible, see? And that's what you want. As long as you can keep it flexible, it won't crack. And if it cracks a little, it's no big deal. All right, so here, let's see, there's an old tote. I bought that one too is probably, that's my oldest. That's even older than the green ones. This has got to be, it's bent because I let this purple sprouting broccoli fall over on it. So it's my fault, it bent up. You can see how big it is, I'm gonna have to trim that out. But they just go for years and years as long as you have soil in it. I will redo that because let me step back so you can see what I've done here. There's something missing. Can you see what's missing? Yep. The strawberry tower is missing. It was an old bird stand, a metal one, and it started to fall apart into pieces. And I told Gary, you know, I think I'm ready to get it out. And before I could even say anything else, he took it out, which is good, which is good. So that's gone, and I'll decide what I'm going to grow in here. I don't know if I really want to set up strawberries in there. I think strawberries do much better when they have more space, because here in Southern California, we're so dry in the summer that you have to keep watering it because look at there's really not much soil that goes in there and it can dry up in hours just literally hours you could water it and in hours it will dry right up due to the weather so i'm not sure yet what i'm going to do so we'll see when i get there what i'm going to do this one i've actually got mint growing and the mint dies back this is orange mint and then in the spring it comes back see the mint on the bottom is already starting to make it come back so i'm not sure i might actually just build a tower and stick in baby walking onions and then I can move them if I want to. See there's the dragon fruit back there. You can see it coming through here. Oh let me show you this. There's some of my buckets I'm setting up. Each of these buckets right now have garlic. I am growing so much garlic. I start them in the house. Go back and watch the video. I'm going to do another one on garlic because I found out there's certain ways that I've seen a couple of videos and they're saying to grow it that way and it's really not that good. And there's other ways that is starting your garlic. If you want to have a sure thing, watch the video and it will really work really good. But let's here, I'll take the top off. And by the way, these trash can wires that you can get at a lot of dollar stores work perfect on these small buckets. This one's a two gallon bucket. These are all garlic coming up. And then in between, I spotted a little bit of lettuce. So in the meantime, the garlic has friends. No, <laughs> the, I, you get, you know, not, you're not just waiting for your garlic. You've got lettuce growing. So I think it works out really good. And I didn't cover this to protect the garlic. I'm covering it because the birds will come in and they would love to eat little bits of the lettuce. So I have just put a cover on top. I don't know if they'd really bother it, but I put it on there anyways. All right, so here I'm clearing things out here too. My geranium died back, so we planted another one from the front yard where Gary took it out. Planted another geranium back there. I'm gonna plant geranium through the back because it does well here in the summer, our hot weather doesn't care and you, have, you only have to water it once in a while. So I'm getting more of the geraniums going. Isn't this cool? When the sun is out, everything's working and all the birds are here, but seconds ago, just as I started walking through, they took off. This place was covered in birds. They were coming, oh, all the peanuts are gone. I had put some peanuts here. So they came and they grabbed the peanuts. I've got all the bird seed here. And of course I gotta move it when it starts to rain really bad. They'll eat wet seed, but you wanna move it because you don't wanna leave them where it's uncomfortable to sit in the rain. And so anyways, I am gonna change this. I'm gonna really aim to make this more of a bird garden but it's still going to grow food. Everything is going to be food except for maybe the geraniums. I've got some snapdragons back there and there'll be some flowers to help the bees because you know Gary's got those bees he he went and took out of a tree. We won't go into that right now. You, we want the bees in our garden because we want a lot of things pollinated 
not everything here has to be pollinated. I don't need to worry about any of the greens, the dinosaur kale or the collard. I'm not worried about that because I do cuttings. I don't worry about the seeds. So, you know, well, you, but you do want the beads for other things. So I am catering to the bees and I'm catering to the, the birds and we'll get all this done. See, this, this geranium stayed alive. It died back for the winter. We've been really getting cold at night, like 40. I know some of you back east are laughing. Eh, we're 20 below. But um, it's cold for here. So a lot of these plants don't do really good when it gets really cold. All in all, everything's still alive. This is the one I'm going to do cuttings on. I love this. It is a hybrid. Isn't this gorgeous? I have, I've only done one cutting, successfully rooted. It's on my deck, doing great, but I wanna do multiple cuttings. I'm not sure what it hybridized with. I'm going to guess because a lot of, a lot of them have purple through it, that probably the dazzling blue kale, because that went to seed, and the collard, not the tree collard. None of my tree collards have ever gone to seed. The plain collard, which is back there. This is a collard plant. It's an old plant I planted years ago. That's why it doesn't look that great, it grows small, but it's struggling because it's an old plant, but it grows a lot of, you know, it goes to seed, I should say. So they both went to seed at the same time and see how they all grew? Multiple plants. This one's got longer leaves and then this one's got more round leaves. And at time, in the summer, they look very purple. Like in the summer, we had a lot of them with purple stripes. Now in the winter, they greened up, which is very normal for green plants. These real you know, green kales, the brassicas do that. But I like the idea that they're round, that you could steam these leaves and use them as a wrap because they're so big and round, they get bigger and they would be bigger if I just trimmed it up better. Right now, it's gotta feed that whole plant. So I'm gonna do a lot of cuttings off of that and cater to this plant because with seeds, you don't know what you're gonna get, especially when they're hybridizing. And collard will hybridize with kale. All right, let's keep going because there's not much else really new. Let's turn around real quick. You can see here, nothing new. Haven't done anything here. It's just, you know, my lemon balm and celery's coming up and walking onions everywhere. Sweet potato, I haven't dug it up to see if there is any, but I did go into Gary's garden and dig some up and use it. And then I found an eggplant. Oh, I didn't even know my eggplant had an eggplant on it. Might just plant that, I'm not sure. And then these are all baby walking onions I've collected on the top so I can move them. This is mint. And then I've got some sage back there. There's the celery struggling right now in the winter. And that's basically it. Now here is where there is a big change. My 15 foot tree colored is gone. There were two of them here. Last month you saw that the small one I told you had died that was back there, the smaller of the two. And then this one, well, it was struggling so bad and the leaves were so bad on it. I mean, you couldn't eat it, you couldn't do anything with it. So what I did was I did a few small cuttings off of it and this is one of them. I don't know if this will make it. This was the one that was in the ground. I did some cuts on it, hoping that it would set root so we'll see that's a cutting off of it and this is a better plant and plus if i keep up with it and stake it i might be able to have it grow right and that's what i'm working on so it's not like i'm losing anything i have that the original other tree colored back here let's see we can walk back here now see that this one fell over they really are getting massive see how it fell over and it's laying down and now it sent all these up. And I'm gonna have the same problem. This thing's gonna end up dying out on me too. So I'm gonna do a lot of cuttings off of it and then actually plant it where I want it planted. So let's get out from here. Look at this, purple tree color. Oh my gosh, this stuff is good. This is really good to eat. That's my daughter's favorite. She says they don't even want the green anymore. They love the purple so much. There's a purple one there, purple there. So I'm gonna spot through along the back a lot of tree colors. Remember, you really can't collect the seeds on them if they do go to seed. I've never had one go to seed. But when they do flower, they will hybridize with whatever kale you've got growing or collard, and then you won't end up with the same plant. But you could end up with something better. You never know. So if you want to grow it, that's up to you. But remember, if somebody is selling tree collard seeds, you may not get a tree colored. You might get a plant that wanders around the ground. Like this is a plain old collared plant, so you don't know what you're going to get. This is just that old bird stand. This one's in still good shape, but we're gonna move it. It's tipping, see it's tipping. And the birds go in there and eat. No hawk can get them. Oh, speaking of hawks, let's step back and let's zoom in for a minute because we got a hummingbird and a hawk here. Now, 
what we've got here is the hummingbird sitting on top of the moringa but if you watch there is the cooper's hawk one of them have been hanging around and i'm not sure if they're coming back to go to nest because they had babies in that pepper tree last spring so we'll see what happens in the next month or two but no hawk not a cooper's hawk or any hawk can get through here because a hawk has to swoop when it catches a bird and it can't swoop this is going to stop it so while they're eating in here see they can go in and out it's a little bit smaller on the other side but the birds can still squeeze in and out and they are completely safe if a hawk even tried which it would never do swoop through here well it can't it would break its neck <laughs> if it tried to continue so they they're completely safe eating out of that and the birds absolutely love it they have wiped out every seed that was in there this morning and that's kind of like one of the first places they go to check and then they go back and they feed over there which they're all feeding now it's just loaded with birds again and they're in the bird bath they're everywhere all kinds of birds we have over 50 species of birds that live in this garden and I have actually put the video together. And since I put that video together, I have seen many more species come through here. If you want to see the video, I'll put the link underneath and you can check it out. I actually went through and labeled each and every bird and it was amazing. And then to find out we even have more than that, they come through here in the spring, in the fall, in the summer. They see all the trees. There's places for them to hide in. And that's why they come here and they've got water. They've got food, my garden. They've got seed I put out. So why not? They probably tell their friends. Actually, what happens is as they're flying through, they see and hear other birds and then they stop by. Even birds that are just migrating through that normally wouldn't even stop. They see the other birds, so they're given the signal that it's safe to do so. And that's what it is. Here, Gary's been working here a little bit on the wall and the fence. So things are being moved around here. So we'll see what happens. Love the spotted toe. I love how they sing. The papaya, we took out the tall one. Gary cut it down. So there it is. It might sprout from the side if this is still alive. And if it's not, it won't. But these now will have a better chance to grow getting out the one that wasn't doing anything and it was dying out from the top anyways and then this is my purple isn't that beautiful curly what is it russian red purple i love that i'm doing cuttings off of it i got a little cutting down there see in there perfect place to put it into the compost thing just let it sit until i move it somewhere else so that's what's going on in my garden and this like i said i'm taking things out and i'm trying to figure out how i'm going to change things I will say something here real quick. See that really tall tree there? It looks like it's really tall. It is nothing nicer than to grow beautiful trees that just are gorgeous and they're food. That's a dazzling blue kale up in the air. Now, I have lost a couple because the birds have gotten on there, the white crowns especially, and they've eaten it to the point where there's no leaves and a, and a plant cannot live without leaves. But there is just nothing more beautiful, and that's what I did to this one. They were going to eat this one, so I just threw some tool over it so they can't eat it. But it's in that pot, so we'll see what happens. They don't last forever, but sometimes you can get some of these kales to last for like five years, and I think that's really good. All right, let's go through to the backyard, see what's going on there. Look at this. Brats, these hybrids are still growing. Isn't that amazing? I just need to clean that up a little bit. And more tomatoes there. And I don't have, I do have this one. I thought I picked it, but I guess I did not. Just a few here and there. In the winter, we're picking tomatoes. These are the berries from the Malabar spinach. I don't want to squeeze it right now. You've seen me squeeze it. These, you can dye frosting and make them kind of a pinky purple. And if you eat them, they have no taste. But if you were making lemonade and you wanted to make it look pink, you could use this, squeeze some of the juice out, and you can really color it. And it would be, well, organic dye. It's supposed to have nutrients in it too, but it has no taste. Papayas are doing good, as you can see. They're still growing plenty, plenty of papayas all winter. There is one that Gary will be picking soon. Let's see what's going on over here. This one is so cool. See how it fell over? Yes, they were all in pots. See, there's a pot there. I'm going to plant something in there. I'm starting to get ready to prep that. Maybe I'll put a squash. I'm not sure what I'm going to put in there. But see, they were in pots. And now, of course, their roots went out. This one broke the pot, fell over. And he's got it wired up to that pole. But look at this. 
this past year it sent out so many side shoots that he's been getting papayas oh cool i love that so many papayas off the side shoots there's another one there look how big is that beautiful and then of course all the way up and we've got more flowers up there isn't that gorgeous so i'm very happy with the papayas if you're growing papayas and you plants and you're not getting anything i've talked about it so many times best thing to do is get some compost bins of any type that's an old trash can type thing he cut in half put it in the ground and start throwing all the leaves kitchen scraps anything you can in there garden waste and just water it and it will feed the plant and that's one thing we found out the papayas need a lot of food and food just means rotting plants so it's not going to cost you anything and then you'll get lots of papayas i want to see this bird he's hiding in the middle of the bottle brush that gary planted here a few years ago yeah he's in the middle we can't see him it's a spotted toey they are so beautiful okay over here let's see my botanic mint i just picked it ended up with a small bucket full i was very excited i'm going to plant probably another tote there and have three totes of botanic mint and then gary's going to take the rest i just started painting some chairs this is going to be my new garden it's going to be set up very different than the chair garden I've got, but it's going to have chairs, it's going to have totes, it's going to have buckets set up in different ways for me to see what works good and as well as for you to see what might work better for you. So we're going to get this all set up real, real soon. I'm just waiting for the right time. I think it's still too little early for that because once I set it up, well, I'll want to be planting in it, but I am going to get this set up fairly quick. So I want to get a little bit other paint. I had purple. I had that mauve color I didn't like. And I, I think I'm going to get some red and blue and a bright, bright yellow. And then I'll get all these chairs set up the way I want. I'm not even sure how many chairs yet. Eight, 12. And then with the buckets too, it's going to be my rainbow garden. Okay. Oh, yes. You know what this is? my daughter sends me a text she's so funny i'm not touching them they're in the street by the trash because she doesn't touch anything with everything going on here so uh i said where are they she told me i called gary he was around the property and he went really fast i was surprised and he got them they were in the street i'm actually going to probably set these up to sit on them they they look really nice they look like they're brand new you know that maybe they were bought this past summer and then maybe they got something different i don't know i like that one with the woven look so we'll see but yes we scored more just a few days ago so we've got more chairs there's my chair garden and for the few of you that said this will be gone in a couple months the chairs will break nope not one chair but i will say that the blue chair in the back which is the one we're smack in the middle that chair is over 30, we figure 30 years old and it is already cracked. I set it up cracked because the chair was cracked, but no place would it, where I thought it would hurt anything. It's still growing, going all year. This was set up, I think March is gonna be a year, doing beautiful. And it was cracked when I put it there and it, the, the tote didn't cause any more cracks on it. So I'm leaving it. This has been oh, a dream. I absolutely love this garden. Of course, as I've told you, I've done nothing except sprinkle in some of the lettuce when it goes to seed. And this is what I was talking about. See, I've been removing lettuce out of here. I just take them out, check out the video, and I move them. Look at this, it's growing peppers. I think this is causing it to grow peppers. It's been growing peppers, which is amazing, all winter. So I'm, I'm really thinking that this is blocking See, if you look up there, see, that's the canyon. And the other night, well, here, here, this is a perfect thing. See, look at the light over here. This is just a little solar light I got at the dollar store. Do you see it moving? See, there's the canyon. But this light, if you see, it's constantly moving. Sometimes I've seen this light really swing, and yet I feel no draft. But it's just the way it's hanging on that little wire there. It's very sensitive. Well, the thing is that little bit causes the wind chill to be a little bit cool. But putting this here, which was supposed to be kind of for a hummingbird feeder I had hanging on there, it's not getting the wind chill factor and it's staying warmer. So this pepper plant has gone ahead and on the bottom keeps throwing more and more peppers. Unbelievable. But going back to the lettuce, 
see here too I just crumble the lettuce seeds in here and whatever grows grows and then I move them easiest plant to move so that's what I do and when you move them you can put them in containers and they take off and you come around and what you do is you if you're gonna really be eating it a lot then you want to take off the ones you don't want and like let's say would you eat that no nah, I'm not gonna eat that it's a little yellow so maybe I won't eat that but you you leave like there's another one back there this is a lettuce lesson get rid of anything you would need if you would need it get rid of it that will turn into compost another thing you could do let's see oh let's see what's here is when you take the lettuce leaves, let's try to do this without breaking anything. You can take the lettuce leaves and put them underneath the pot. I don't see any earthworms right now, but they're probably there. Put your pot back, and now the earthworms will come back and eat the lettuce leaves. Same thing, take off what you're not gonna eat because whatever, when you leave it, and I don't take it all off, but when you do take it off, if you've got a small garden, then the plant will concentrate on new leaves, and these leaves, even though they're yellow, the plant's still taking care of them. The plant doesn't know, even this one. If you're not gonna use this one, it's not green enough, just take it off and I don't know what's here. Oh, there's earthworms, see? There's a little baby earthworm, see? Oh, he goes, you touched me, you touched me. We'll put you back. Okay, don't crawl up my finger. I've never had an earthworm do that. And we'll do this. See? Now, it's gonna decay right away and all the earthworms have food and you've trimmed off your beautiful little lettuce, and look at that. And that's what I'm saying, it's that easy. So remember, lettuce, you don't have to struggle with one seed at a time and separate it. Pull them out and separate them. That's what I did here, there was no lettuce in here. So I put one there, I put one there, I put one there, spotted one here, yes, shame on me, see. You know the old saying, practice what you preach? I don't, I have too much. So let's see what's under here, could do the same thing with here. This is what I do with any of the pots that I'm layering. If, you know, I just put different things under there. This is a tomatillo I threw in here in hopes, and it will pop in the spring and start growing in here. And then I can move those and see more lettuce. I actually popped all those lettuce in there. I moved it from the one tote over here and just took them with a little fork or spoon. What do I have here? This is the greatest stuff in the garden. Spoon. You can get these at Walmart. You can get them at the thrift store, cheaper. But at Walmart, a set of four for 90 something cents. So a quarter a piece, what a great garden tool to have. Better than taking the spoons out of your kitchen and then accusing your husband, where's your favorite spoon? We won't get into that. So anyways, love this garden. So let's see, on this garden, what am I gonna do come this spring? Nothing. I've talked about that on my garden vlogs. I am literally going to go through each tote at a time. Every tote in here, see how it's stained in the front, is drained. Well, see, I haven't even drained all the water out. This water is valuable food. I should be picking that up and putting it in the truck bed. Yeah, okay. And uh, moving it around, I do water the plants back with it. But the point is, every single one, see it's got parsley back there, is growing beautiful. So I'm going to literally go through every single one. This one, I will probably go through the lettuce and eventually get rid of all the lettuce and plant something in it. I'm leaving the pepper. I will literally cater to each one at a time. Being that I'm growing in small totes, these are 18 gallon totes. I got them at Walmart for five bucks. I can do one at a time. It's not like I have to take care of a six foot, eight foot bed. I can literally do one toad at a time. I can take everything out and use the soil and start building more soil. I can leave it and just maybe add some more native soil or kitchen scraps and stuff and build it up. Or if something is growing beautiful the way I want it, I can leave it. So I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but they're not moving. They're not coming off. I'm not emptying them. I'm either gonna refurbish them or build them up and plant something else. And then the truck bed, let's go oh, look at my apple trees. From seed, I have to learn how to graft one day. Look at that, all of them live. They came up in my, well, my deck where I compost and stuff. And that's a nectarine tree, we brought that over here. We have a nectarine that drops a lot of you know, pits around and the seeds grow and in two years we'll get nectarines from it ungrafted. So it's wonderful. I had them growing on the deck. I was gonna compost them. I dragged them out here. That one's in a pot. Don't worry, if it gets big, I'll break the pot and keep going. And they all lived. 
There's even a tiny one over here. Yeah, oh, something chewed that. There was a tiny one here. Maybe nature's telling me I don't need a tree so close to the truck bed. But they all lived. So we'll see what happens. And garlic chives are growing in there. See the seeds on the top? Yeah, these are all seeds. See the, you can see the black seeds. Let's see if we can see it. Those are seeds. And then any place I want garlic chives. Do I want garlic chives in here? Just throw them and I'm done. Look at this. So many squash. I haven't even picked them. Shame on me. We grew so many and a lot of these will rot into the ground and just start growing again. So I'll probably compost a lot of them. The good ones, the bright ones that are still growing, I will take those in. And the other day I didn't know what to do with one. I cut it and put it in a pot with a little bit of boiling water. And I basically steamed it on the top of the stove and cut it up after it was soft, took a fork. And when it was soft, the dogs loved it. And I added it to my chili. So that worked out really good. So that's what's going on here. Isn't this gorgeous? I'm quite proud of my chair garden. This is one that was cracked. I can't remember where it was cracked. And like I said, it was, we had two, I think it was cracked on the seat a little bit. And we had another one that was broke before the chair garden. Oh, a few years ago and Gary tossed it in the trash. No, I would have been the person taking it out of the trash. So it has been doing really good. That one was not painted, it came blue. That's the color it was, a dark blue. And for being like, wow, we're figuring we picked it up about 1992 or 93. So it's really, really old. I still have the table. And I think I still have a couple more of the other. There was a set of four. I think he threw away one. I'm not sure what happened to the other two. They're around here somewhere. And all of the rest I painted, some of them years ago. Some of them were painted over 10 years ago and they really hold the paint nice. But this has just been a wonderful garden. You could set up these, was there 11 chairs if in a small garden? I don't care where you have, it could be an apartment, it can be on a patio, and you could grow probably all the vegetables you need. If you took care of it differently than I did and you catered to what you like, you could have parsley growing, celery growing, lettuce growing, I mean, whatever you need, tomatoes growing, peppers growing, you could practically get almost all your produce out of it. We had watermelon growing in here last year, zucchini, cater to in the fashion in which you want to grow it, you could probably grow so much. And by composting all these brown leaves, see the plant is having, is struggling with the cold. We've been so cold. You don't throw this away. What you're doing is you're building your own soil. That's not to say you don't want to buy soil. You may want to buy, I've talked about this, you might, you know, buy some nice soil and put a couple inches on the top, but underneath it's all breaking down. I showed you the earthworms. All right, let's go walk over to see what Gary did over at the bathtub. So that's the end of the garden tour. Yes, we put a bench here. You might remember this bench was in my garden. I had it in my garden. It was sitting up against the house. And I looked at it and I told Gary, we don't sit on it. Nobody sits on it. Once in a while, we had family parties here. I see the kids go out, but they usually use the swing we've got and other chairs. And I said, you know, I think it'd look really cool here. And as he builds the ponds up here, the bathtub and the ponds, this is really a nice place to sit. You can see the sunrise if I get up in the morning. The deer will come through here. Not that I'm going to sit here and wait for the deer, but I could get up in the morning on a nice summer morning and watch the sunrise and look at my chair garden. I'll be able to see my new rainbow garden. And I just thought, why not move it? So he moved it the other day. Everything's doing good. All the ponds, remember, Gary has, has the mosquito fish in it. And it's amazing how they can live in the worst water and that's why people get those because they don't mind the water they just want to eat they're little eating machines and they eat algae and they eat mosquitoes and any little bugs and he's got to be careful he kind of helps out the dragonflies because in the beginning when they're real tiny the little nymphs they'll eat that too so he builds little things sometimes for his ponds to make sure the nymphs are safe all in all, I'm really happy with everything going on. I really am excited to share everything with you because you may not be able to do gardening on such a big scale, but you might be able to set up a few buckets or a few flower pots or some chairs or some totes. And I've got garlic growing just, just behind the camera over there. I've got garlic growing in buckets like I showed you in the other yard just taking off. I've kind of mastered garlic now. I understand how it grows and the best way 
to get him started. If you start him in some other ways I've seen put onto YouTube, they don't grow right sometimes and now I understand why and I'm going to do another video on how to get garlic growing in all different ways really and this way you know it's so easy once you figure out how to do it and then you can plant them seeing them grow you know you're not waiting for something and like it rotted out you didn't know you'll know that you planted good garlic and then I've got what else I've got lettuce growing in buckets so I'm going to have buckets all over the place with my totes and I'm really happy here. Here I'm going to put a lot of plants in, in pots. And I don't want to put buckets here. I, well, I might put buckets, but they'll be gray. Something that's going to be camouflaged in. Because I want this to look like a natural scene. All right, so maybe tomatoes won't grow on a natural hillside. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. I want to be able to come back here and feel like I've really in a little piece of nature. And I'll be able to watch the fish come to the top and swim around and the water fountains I'm going to be putting up. I'm going to set up a lot of different solar fountains in here. So I'm really excited with that. And then I've got here pomegranate trees. I've got more growing on the deck, so I'll spot those through around. I'm going to leave them in pots because we don't need a ton of pomegranates. And I'll put in other plants in here. I'd love to put kale. But we already figured out the deer love kale. They love kale, they love tree collard, so I don't want to draw them in. So if I do put some in, I'll put something in the front, maybe lemon verbena or rosemary, something they don't like, so maybe they won't bother it. I don't know, I'll see. But this has just been a lot of fun and I, I'm really happy with the bench. And maybe I'll get something to make a little table so I can put my cup of coffee or my iced tea for the summer and just come hang out here. What a beautiful, beautiful view. Just to look down the canyon and look through all the trees. I love having a lot of trees around. That's why for me, I don't mind dealing with some roots. If I have to deal with tree roots, then I'll figure out a way. It's either that or think of a farm. Farms just clear everything and then they just plant everything. Straight field, no trees. Well, everybody's got to do it the way they want. And that of course is survival. They need to have plants growing where there's no tree roots and I understand that. And if I had no tree roots, I could take the whole back parking lot here. I call it a parking lot, just the back field of the yard here. And I could plant everything in the ground. Maybe a little fence around it to keep out maybe some rabbits or deer or different critters. But the point is, I don't have to. And if I don't have to, that's why I love leaving as many trees as I can. Everybody needs to grow the way they want. There's no reason why you can't have a beautiful garden, be it super tiny or super big, and make it the way you like it. I just want you to garden. I think everybody needs to grow a little bit of food. Even if you go to the store, go to a restaurant, come home with your sandwiches, be able to go out into your yard or your deck or out your window or your patio and pick that little fresh parsley or fresh lettuce you grew and add that to your sandwich your body will love you for it. So with that, I'm done with the garden tour. I'm gonna to go find Kitty. She's roaming around the garden, I think, somewhere. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat with your girl. Bye-bye, everybody.